Sorry, Psalm 41. Psalm 41. Tell somebody this is going to be good. Psalm 41. Looking at the ninth verse, the word says, Even my own familiar friend in whom I trusted who ate my bread, has lifted up his heel against me. Now, even though he lifted, now he's talking about Judas, is he not? But what if Judas had not sold Jesus out? Somebody's got to do it. We tend to brag about the things we haven't done in life. But somebody's got to do it to reach those who have been there. Oh, this is going to be good. Never beat yourself up. How many's ever screwed up? Never beat yourself up again. Somebody had to do it. Jesus was going to be sold whether Judas did it or not, because every word must be fulfilled. Somebody had to do it. Well, let, let's go look at this. In uh, Matthew 27... Matthew, the 27th chapter... Thomas Edison said, I haven't failed. I just found 10,000 ways this thing won't work. (laughs) Amen. So just because you mess up, don't quit. Okay. You may be in a walk of faith and you tried something, took a leap of faith, and it's like, wow, that's not working. Don't you dare quit. Okay. Matthew, the 27th chapter. The fifth verse. Then he, Judas, threw down the pieces of silver in the temple and departed and went and hanged himself. Tell your neighbor, don't do it. Don't Don't hang yourself over anything you've ever done wrong in your life. Any mistakes you made. You can't live in, I wish I would have, I wish I could have. Oh, if I had it to do over again. If you live that kind of life, you will end up hanging yourself. Well then, Mark, why did I make those mistakes? Somebody had to. Somebody had to do it. Okay? God does not predestine you to fall. He has predestined you as sons and daughters of the Most High God. But he also knows that we're going to do stupid stuff sometimes. Amen? And sometimes willfully. See, a mistake is when you didn't mean to do it or had no knowledge of the outcome of it. But many of us have blatantly, willingly done things that we say, well, I wish I hadn't have done it. I wish I hadn't have said it like that. I wish... But somebody's got to do it. Why? Because there's other people out there that have done the same thing. They're about to hang themselves. Okay? Let's go to John, the 17th chapter. John 17. And again, I've covered some of this. I would have to look back in my notes. But I've covered some of this with you, and I don't want to rehash this I, I remember years ago I was talking about Judas and uh, boy I got a lot of backlash for it yeah. because everybody puts Judas in hell That's right. oh, yeah. amen yeah. John, John the 17th chapter Jesus is praying and he's talking to the father very few times is his, are his prayers recorded but the times they are recorded is very important And this is one of those times. In the 12th verse, he said, Father, while I was with them, somebody say them. Them. Now, them is a personal pronoun. Well, who is the them? He's not talking about everybody. He's talking about these that are coming up. I kept them in your name. Somebody say kept. 
The English word kept. Have you ever looked that up? See, that's what they pay me to do. <laughs> because a lot of you don't have time to go into the original language and see all these things. The word kept means I have preserved and protected to keep as whole. Okay, I have kept them. I have blessed them in your name. Those whom you gave me, I have kept. Oh, while I was with those that you gave me, I protected them. I blessed them. I have kept them and none of them is lost. Have you ever looked up the English word lost from the original Greek derivative to which it means? You know what it means? To forget who you are. See, in our Western society, we think if a person is lost, they don't have Jesus. But to be lost in the Scripture means you simply forgot where you belong. Amen. That's the reason in Luke, the 15th chapter, do you remember the story of the prodigal son? Yes. Okay, the prodigal son, we get out of context so many times because we don't read the other two parables before that. The first one was the shepherd had all the sheep and one went astray. Now, was it still the shepherd's sheep? It just got lost. It forgot where it belonged. And the second parable was the, the parable of the lost coin on the bracelet. Now, was it still the woman's coin? It was just lost. The father had two sons. One of them went away. The father even said, this my son was dead. Okay. The, he was still the father's son. He was just lost. He forgot where he belonged. Okay. And so when the word says, none of them is lost except the son of perdition. Have you ever looked up the word perdition? To think doomed and damned. I have been, let me retranslate this. Father, I've been able to protect and keep every one that you have given me except the one that forgets who they are and beats themselves up to be pleasing to me. Okay? So that's so perdicious thinking. How many has ever felt guilty, shamed, or condemned? That's perdicious thinking. Okay, but see, in my upbringing as a preacher's kid, Judas always went to hell because he's the one that sent Jesus to the cross and turned him over to, to uh, the Jews. Well, somebody had to do it. It was already prophesied in the Old Testament he was going to be sold for 30 pieces of silver. Why 30 pieces of silver? Because that was the going rate in that economy for a slave. Okay. So it was already prophesied. Whether Judas did it or not, somebody's got to do it. If Judas knew somebody was going to have to do it, why hang yourself? That's what caused a deeper study. Because see, Judas was a believer. Yes. Judas was, well, the word says his name is Judas Iscariot. Judas' name means Judah. It comes from the Hebrew word Judah, which means praise. Iscariot was a southern region of Judea. And when the Babylonian Empire came in and took all the Jews captive, they didn't get the Jews in South Judea. Those were the ones that were left over who were called Pharisees. Because they weren't tainted by the secularism of the Babylonian Empire. Now you see why the Pharisees had so much problem with the other Jews, even though they were Jew. They had some Jew in them. Samaritans had some Jew in them. But they had been tainted by the secular things. So the Pharisees of South Judea, they weren't taken in the Babylonian captivity. Okay? So Judas Iscariot means one who praises his works. Okay? So Judas was not taken, or, or, or Judas, uh, that realm of Jews were not taken in the captivity. So naturally, I'm going to look down on you because I'm better than you. I haven't been through what you've been through. But somebody's got to do it. So 
we read in the Word, yes, Judas was a believer. Amen? But my question was, why? Why did he kill himself? Because he loved Jesus that much. He knew Jesus was the Messiah. Judas had the power. Well, let me put it this way. Judas healed sick. Judas cast out demons. Well, how do you know? Because over in the scripture, uh, what is it? In uh, Matthew 10, 4, I think it is. Yeah, Matthew 10, let's go to the first verse. And when Jesus had called his 12 disciples to him, he gave them power over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease. Was Judas one of the 12? Did he have power to heal the sick and cast out devils? Did he do it? Yes, he did. For three and a half years, he did it. Judas was a believer in the Messiah. He was a temple boy. He had heard all of his life a Messiah is coming that will cleanse the leper, raise the dead, restore authority. Uh-huh. So when Jesus, he sees Jesus doing all these things, he's thinking that's the Messiah. And then he turns around and Jesus says, follow me, Judas. And he gives Judas power to do what he was doing. Judas was a bona fide believer. But he hung himself. But my questions really started with this. Where did all believers go when they died before Jesus died? Paradise. The waiting place is what the Jews call it. But then I can just tell you don't hang yourself. But then this is the way I study. I want to know why he got so mad that he actually even turned Jesus over. Because there's a reason people do what they do. There's a reason. Okay? Lemons don't just pop up. They have a root somewhere. Okay? If there's a fruit, there's a root somewhere. And then... You have to go back to this. And I had never known this until I really began to study it. Judas was the son of Simon the leper. The Pharisee. In John the 12th chapter it says that Jesus was invited to Simon's house. To eat dinner. And that's when Mary walks in with the alabaster box of oil and breaks it and showers it over him. John, the 12th chapter, the first through the fourth verse, I believe it is, you can read that. And Judas, in his heart, said, why would you waste? Well, yeah, I'll just read it to you. Why would you waste that oil? John 12 Yeah, the first verse. Then six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany where Lazarus, who had been dead, whom he raised from the dead. There they made him a supper, and Martha served, but Lazarus was one of those who sat at the table with him. Then Mary took a pound of very costly oil of spikenard and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair, and all the house was filled with the fragrance of the oil. But one of his disciples... Now, notice, see that personal pronoun, his? Mm -hmm. That means it's still his. Just because you messed up doesn't mean you got to get re-saved. You just forgot who you were. But one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, who would betray him, said, Why was this fragrant oil not sold for 300 denarii and given to the poor? Then he said, Then he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and had the money box, he used it to take what what was put in it. But Jesus said, let her alone. She has kept this for the day of my burial. Now understand, at that moment, they are basically three and almost a half years into following Jesus. 
So he knew he was the Messiah. As a matter of fact, Jesus healed Judas' daddy Simon from leprosy. So how can somebody who God has been so good to turn around and do something so stupid? Somebody had to do it. Now what's this? In the Hebraic culture, a father and son were very close. If you come against one, you've come against the other. Now Simon is a believer, but he's still a Pharisee. Judas is a believer, but what's this? In that culture, if I offend the son, I have offended the father. You never bring offense into a person's house who invited you there. So when Judas started thinking in his heart, man, what could I have done with that oil? Jesus perceived it and corrected him in his own house. Now understand, people who commit failures, even willingly or even unwillingly, are for one of two reasons, hurt or greed. See, we've always as ministers taught, well, Judas loved money so much. No. It wasn't the love of money that Judas did this. How do you know, Mark? Because he didn't spend any of it that he got from him. If it was about the money, he would have already spent it. It was about the hurt. He had offended his house. By speaking truth. A amen. And I've had people sell me out. Because I offended their house by speaking truth. But somebody had to do it. So what's this? Why did Judas turn Jesus over? Because he was so hurt. How many times have we done things. Because we were hurt. And then Judas goes and hangs himself. Let's go back to Matthew, the 27th chapter. Are you all okay with this? Amen. Matthew 27. This, is, this message is not a license to go do something stupid. <laughs> it is a springboard to bounce back from stupid. Okay? Matthew 27, the first verse. Then Judas, his betrayer, seeing that he had been condemned, was remorseful and brought back the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders. So hear me. Judas did not sell Jesus for the sake of the money. Or he would have negotiated the price. Okay? Judas turned Jesus over because he was angry and hurt. Mm -hmm. Saying, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. And they said, what is that to us? You see to it. Then he threw down the pieces of silver in the temple and departed and went and hanged himself. Don't do it. Don't beat yourself up even if you've done something wrong, I want to take just about five or ten minutes and show you somebody had to do it. It was already prophesied in the Old Testament. Somebody's going to sell him for 30 pieces. 